Hello guys and welcome to another Diablo Immortal video. Today I'll be talking about my build for my Crusader. Basically, this is the PvE build that I have uh, because uh, some of you asked me in the comment section how I did this and how I did that. Uh, so without any further ado, let me just show you uh, my build. I will start with the fact that uh, this build is mainly PvE, full support build. It's pretty good for farming, it's incredibly good for dungeons especially if uh, your players know how to take advantage of it and especially if you know what uh, you're doing. So it is the urge build. Um, the reason why it's so good is uh, the second effect. Look at this. The first effect, of course, is pretty important. It increases the duration of all beneficial effects on you or your party members by 30%. That's incredible. But the second one increases the target's attack speed by 30% for three seconds each time you use a skill to grant the beneficial effect to yourself or a party member. That's really, really cool. Basically, you can run dungeons for one or two minutes it's that great uh, and let's start with the build itself i have the arrow keeper um, uh, as my helmet look at this the inspiration for how the banner moves you to that's really important for two reasons the first reason is that if you just place a banner the banner can be easily destroyed especially if you're in the middle of a great fight so if you don't have this thing that inspiration the inspiration uh, follows you what you need to do is place a banner and then immediately make sure that you um, trigger the, the the consecration of light or whatever it was called the skill that makes you immortal i forgot its name so uh, by having the banner traveling with you you don't have to do that and that's pretty pretty cool when it comes to the day uh, the armor i have the daybreak look at this consecration now protects you and nearby party members decreasing damage taken by 15 percent why is this important because it triggers the urge effect so you, you gain attack speed by doing that and of course decreasing the damage taken by 15 percent is always great especially if you're farming in a dungeon let's say that you are paragon level 130 and have to farm a dungeon dungeon that is uh, for uh, hell 4 it's basically you don't have the items for hell 4 paragon level 150 plus so we'll be taking more damage and that's pretty pretty cool when it comes to my shoulders now i really love this thing the guardian of just uh, justice it summons a guardian who is dealing pretty good damage but the important thing here is that he's being affected by uh, all the urge bonuses he is being affected by banner he's being affected by the conjuration of light so you can make him immortal you can increase his damage uh attack speed i'm sorry you can make sure that he crits and on top of that he's pretty good for tanking bosses in challenges trust me so if you haven't tested it yet, i made a video on the guardian of justice you can test it out it's pretty cool uh the bristle basically sacred fire now also hurls wells of flame dealing 955 damage to all enemies in their path i mean that's a must if you're running pve this is the thing that you need to have it's really really important uh the legs i have uh fury steed basically um the horse becomes a fury steed that burns the ground enemies but no longer drags enemies uh this is pretty important to have as well uh, of course you have other options here but i definitely use that because i find it pretty cool and when it comes to shield i have the consecration also slows enemies movement by 30 percent now it's not really the greatest skill here there is a skill that I haven't unlocked yet, unfortunately, for the shield, and this is the reason why I'm using the Consecration buff. It's pretty useful, by the way. Uh, you can slow the enemies and then just uh, try to kite them, especially if um, you're doing uh, challenge rift, so that's pretty, pretty important. So, uh, these are uh, my, uh, this is my PvE build, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate how basically it is good. I really like it for farm. F what I would remove if I'm doing dungeon is I'm going to keep everything like this, but the Depending on the dungeon, I would either remove the steed or I would either remove the guardian and just going to replace it with the conjuration of light. Uh, for the simple reason that sometimes uh, protecting your allies is pretty important. Uh, for instance, if you're doing uh, path of anguish or whatever, sometimes, you know, the first boss, this worm deals insane amount of damage, so it's going to be good to make sure that your parties are immune to everything and stuff like this. Uh, so, yeah. Look at the farm knight, by the way, now. What I can do is I can just uh, summon the guardian. Or just, he, can, he can hit the enemies while I'm traveling to the next group. So he can uh, keep my streak intact. What I'm going to do here, I'm just going to leave this like this. And I'm going to the next group. And I can farm like this all day long. When everything expires, I can use my horse just to leave the path behind me. And this is how I keep my streak alive. Basically, of course, I can use uh, this. But I don't really use it often because 
uh, if I if I'm farming alone and if I use that often, it may uh, lead to a situation when uh, I mean they just die too fast and I cannot proceed with the farm. That's unfortunate. Uh, but another thing that you have to keep in mind that uh, you can cast your guardian from distance. For instance, let's say I'm here. I want th those guys to suffer as well, so I can cast the guardian in that situation, that direction. So I can do this basically forever. And this is the this is the way how I farm with this specific build. It's pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. You just have to make sure that you use your horse pretty pretty wisely. Don't don't, don't just be uh, on the horse 24/7. You see, I didn't use it that good now, and I almost lost my streak. Uh, but it is what it is. Now I'm going to let these guys die uh, from this effect, and I'm going back to. Uh, those guys and uh, i find this way of farming with crusader pretty good once again it doesn't matter whether you are alone or not but it ex especially works pretty good when you're alone and once again look at this uh the attack speed buff and the critical hit buff also works on your soldier on this guardian of justice whatever he was called and that's pretty good for farming i'm not going to lie that's pretty good for farming so yeah this is how basically uh how i do pve this is how i farm with crusade i find it pretty cool once again look at this i can uh, farm those two uh, at the same time when uh, this guy is done i can just uh, help him uh, finish those off and i can go to my next uh enemies which are right here i'm going to let him look at this by the way when i buff him i'm oh, sorry uh the con <laughs> he just expired so what i wanted to say is that uh, the reason why um, i used once again uh this skill what was its name i totally forgot its name uh, the reason is because uh look at my attack speed now i'm just going to use it and look at this i get the 30 percent bonus because it's now basically it's it's a beneficial effect because it protects me right so it uh it can boost the urge effect the urge set effect so i can get additional attack speed and that's pretty cool so basically this is the way i farm currently as you can see there isn't a lot of people in hell 4 so that's pretty cool uh not many people which means that uh, you can farm alone if you want even though i'm not really a huge fan of farming alone uh but still I just wanted to share with you guys my um, ideas on Crusader when it comes to PvE and how I farm uh, and alone and why I use those specific skills. Once again, if you are doing dungeons, depending on the dungeon, for instance, if I'm doing um, the Pit of Anguish, I would always use the horse because it saves a lot of time. But if I'm, uh, for instance, doing Namari, then I don't need the horse. What I will do is I'm going to keep the Guardian, I'm going to keep Judgment skill, and instead I'm just going to use the Conjuration of Light instead of the horse because in Namari, you don't really, you don't really have a lot of, uh, let's say, space to cover. Uh, the dungeon is not really huge, so you don't need to use the horse in a lot of situations. So yeah, basically this is what I do. For instance, with this particular build, it's not that great for farming because you're losing the horse, using your ability to go from one place to another uh, very very fast even though you have this uh, guardian who is uh, once again a skill that you can cast from distance i would all really like to have the horse every time when i farm alone all right guys so this is going to be all for me today i hope you found this video useful see you next time take care perfect